Anyway, folks, all of us across the entire investing spectrum are just getting whopped upside the head. There's a fundamental shift going on in the stock market investing community, whether you're day trader, value investor, swing trader, you, you have something to outperform the market. That doesn't work anymore. There is nothing that works in this market to the point where the YouTube investing community is crumbling beneath us. And the only ones that are going to be left are the people that find a way to shift. I did a video on Friday talking about millennial money, a live stream kind of breaking down this shift that coincided with the FTX collapse. And Jeremy from Financial Education posted another video that I think can really help us solidify, understand our own risk tolerance and how we're investing in this market. And I want to break this video down into pieces. So if you'd appreciate that conversation, hit that like button because he gives us real cool insight into a strategy that really worked well for the last decade. But take a listen. I think I found a little hack on the market, right? Oh, I need to find companies that are on the verge of switching from basically money losing companies to money making companies. And if you do that, you're going to get likely some insane gains. You just got to be kind of like six to 12 months in front of it. As long as you're six to 12 months in front of it, you can build out a nice size position and then make a stupid amount of money, like more money than you ever dreamed of. Right. And so I found this hack and it worked. It worked several times. Okay. And it worked until it didn't. And now I've got to make adjustments because if we look at my, my newest group of stocks, let's say that I bought very, very heavily here recently, right? And we look at those companies. The thing is with those, since I've bought them, they've gotten further from flipping to profitability than getting close, okay? So first and foremost, the stock market's pure Fugazi. You know, history doesn't repeat, it truly rhymes. And we've all been so blessed over the last decade of such market stability. And this investing strategy is genius, right? Find small cap, non-profitable companies, even like Tesla that are about to soon be profitable and watch the gains just start rolling in. The problem is, is there's no strategy that works in a market environment like this. Like value investing is pretty much dead. BABA, Meta, PayPal, I can name a huge Huge list of stocks that I would have said were great values even a year ago that would still have caused your accounts to implode by like 50 plus percent here, right? And even my own strategies in the past were buy things like Canopy Growth Corp before legalization, go and buy stocks that are hyped up that will have some kind of major catalyst in the upcoming years and let the hype train kind of drive the stock and propel it forward. But now those hype trains are even dead in and of themselves. And we're all kind of just residing looking at things like bonds, like GICs, looking at index funds, which which I think would should have always been a strategy in the back of our mind with some of these profits. But obviously in Jeremy's situation here, right? Like when you're making so much money on something that works so well, you're gonna wanna double down on it as much as humanly possible. But he, he continues on here. And I think, again, these statements get, get very uh, entailing into what's going on with the economy itself. And why is this, right? Well, the truth is I've never had to deal with inflation since I've been in the market. Since I got in the market end of 08 into 2009, Inflation's never been a thing. Until this past year, I never had to deal with that crap. It literally, it was never like a concern. Like inflation for me, almost my entire investing career was, was under 4%. And most of the years it was one, 2%. So this whole inflation thing, right? It was never, never, ever a problem. But here's the thing you gotta understand, okay? And here's the thing that I now understand is Inflation can completely wreck companies and it can completely wreck consumers. I didn't understand to the extent of how bad this could really get essentially. I, I understood it was like a thing we'd have to work through it, but I didn't understand the extent. And when I look at the damage, the collateral damage that has happened here, it's borderline shocking. And I see why the Fed has to take this so serious, right? And of course they lagged too far on the other side and you know they should have been raising rates way before they were. I have never witnessed an inflationary environment. The Fed raising interest rates, trying to slow down and crush all asset classes to prevent people from spending lavishly on Rolexes and shoes and you know small caps and NFTs and crypto. Like this is a healthy thing we're witnessing in the market. The problem is, is because the market's Fugazi, nothing's trading off valuations, nothing's trading off some kind of strategy over the last decade that worked so symbiotically with the rise, it's just all getting devastated, right? So let's see how Jeremy is shifting into a new strategy and I'll offer some insights onto what I think Jeremy should be doing um, because obviously this, this is still kind of speculative in nature, but let's just continue to take a listen here, shall we? Inflation, it doesn't matter. I'm always a buy the dipper out there. So the question is, where do I buy the dip over the next year, okay? The first thing I'll say before I get into where I'm buying the dip next year, 
uh, it won't be in the same companies I've been buying the, you know, which I've been buying a lot of different stocks, but in terms of those unprofitable ones, no, I'm not throwing new money after those stocks. So stocks like the chef stocks, like Oatly stocks, like Fubo stocks, like honest, I'm going to hold those stocks, but I'm not going to put fresh money into those stocks at this point in time. Those for me are just hold. Like I've already over invested into all those companies. And something I always knew was if you're going to bet on an unprofitable company, bet small. So then if you make a mistake, it's a small mistake. And if you, you're right about that, you're still going to make a ton of money, right? Because you got to, like I, like I spoke about at the beginning of this video, if you get in one of those type of companies, that's a money loser and then flips to profitability, usually there's a massive move up for the stock price, right? So it's kind of like a smaller bet. So if you're wrong, it's a smaller mistake, but you're still going to make a ton of money in the end. I got a, a little like, um, what do they call it? Winnie the Pooh, you know, winning the honey pot too many times, right? And uh, I went way too heavy in all those unprofitable companies. And I think we all know that now looking back. Right? So this is the wake up call moment. This is the wake up call every crypto investor is getting, everybody that over leveraged into a position and didn't have a well diversified portfolio. I personally wish back in the day, I put way more money into things like MyMed, way more money into these speculative investments. I'd be so much better off, but then maybe I would have kept doing it. And when the market flipped into this direction, I would have lost a lot more money nobody really knows so this is just something that i think every investor needs to understand guys don't over leverage yourself i'm sad that this is a reality people have to wake up to through something like this rather than you know i've just been doing it through the market cycles but nonetheless let's continue on nonetheless where do i go kind of moving forward with kind of by the depth in, in where am i focused here okay so first thing is Positive net income companies uh, in terms of buying the debt. That's what I'm fully focused on moving forward. Companies that have positive net income, companies that have positive cash flow and are expected to have uh, cash flow generation that's going to get even better. And companies that I expect to have expansion in margins and expansion in net income in 2023. That's where I'm going to put fresh money in 2023 because the bottom line is we don't know where the economy is going, right? Ugh. This kills me inside. Uh, Jeremy is still being an idiot all around. In my humble opinion to the fact that the markets are Fugazi. It doesn't matter if you're buying cash flowing or positive EBITDA assets. You could have been a value investor like everything money. That doesn't work in a market like this. So why, why can't you just do index funds? This is not financial advice by any metric, but you don't know what you don't know and you're ignorant to many sectors of the market. So why not let a market cap weighted index like, you know, Vanguard's S&P or some of these dividend ETFs that actually weight stocks that do very well and underweight the ones that don't do so well. I mean, if you just bought like VYM, SCHD, where oil stocks were able to make their way to the top of these ETFs that have now really stabilized and have almost pushed back to all time highs, and then maybe pick a handful of positive cash flowing companies and see if you can speculate on them to make a, a pretty decent return because you couldn't have done that with Meta. You couldn't have done that with Google or Amazon. You couldn't have done that with any stock through 2022. So why would it work in 2023? You're just purely speculating and gambling on the pure fugazi of the market. So I think Jeremy is going to have a very rude wake up call when he picks another handful of stocks and realizes that none of the values have truly mattered on them in the first place. And he hopes that he can still pick a winner or two. But I hope you guys, and again, not financial advice, understand this. I mean, bonds, GICs, you know, crypto, gold, oil, all of this stuff should play a fundamental part in your portfolio and indexes do most of that for you, weighting the best stocks to the top. And if they start to underperform like Meta did, then they'll get deweighted down the list and you won't see the same kind of impact. I think, I hope, I dream every investor comes to this reality at some point because cost averaging over long periods of times and mechanisms that have worked for the last 70, 80 years would probably be the most prudent and you know path of least resistance to generating wealth. But I'll pass that question off to you. How are you guys re-strategizing in this market? I'd love to hear about it in that comment section below but something tells me you know jeremy will be around but i'm watching one youtuber after another fade away and stop posting videos and i promise you that'll probably never be me so consider subscribing help the channel out stay cool stay awesome i'll catch you in the next one